Hi, my name's Cathy Millet and this week we're looking at bulrushes again. So starting off in the real world as normal, you can see that rushes are normally massed together. There's always a group of them, they don't grow on their own as individual plants. So what we're trying to do is get that effect of mass. So these are cattail kits, Bush HO1256, and as you can see, they're plastic injection moulded. Now, they come on a base, and the idea is you cut the base out, you glue them together, and you can and create a whole baseline. Now, I'm not particularly sure, I, I think I'd like to plant them individually um, in clusters, so I'll probably do that, but I'll keep a few together to show how Bush envisage them being done and you can see whether you like that or not. The first up is painting them. Now, if I'm honest, I would normally airbrush these, but it's a bit hard to do in my kitchen. So instead, I'm just gonna paint them with a brush, which I'm not doing that many, so it won't take that long. So I've just got a few colors. I've got my Tamiya and I've got the, um, this is Vallejo and it's golden olive, which just happens to be the one I had out for the scum test. And I'm just literally gonna paint the edges. Um, these are very, they're not touching, they're very easy to do, so that they're, they're easy enough to sort. You don't want to put too much paint on, or you might end up with a um, over thick, but you want to make sure the paint actually sticks. And that's where some acrylics have the downfall. If you find your paint's not sticking, a little coat of dull coat or something on first will give a, a key for the surface, and so your, your paint will stick to that a bit better. But there we go. And I'm just going to go through them all and just paint. Now you might wonder why I've got two colours, it's because I think every every plant has a different colour towards the top and the bottom and I think it's important that we paint them and reflect that. So I'm going to come and paint the um, darker colour at the base in a minute. I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker Tamiya colour. This is just olive green as well. And in, in a couple of them, because I'm going to cut them out as per the bush instructions, I'm just going to paint this base with this colour as well, just to give it something to blend into. Okay, so now we're going to put on the bulrush bit, which is the brown flowering bit at the top. Now, I've just got some Vallejo chocolate brown. You don't need a lot and a relatively fine brush. I'm not a huge fan of very fine brushes, but here we go. And they've actually carefully moulded these in, so all you need to do is just add the splodge on the top. You can see that on all of these pieces. And there we go. Turn it round, do the same on the other side. And there we go, your bulrushes. Once these have dried, the next stage is just to cut them out. They're all very flat. If you look at them this end on, they're all they're all sort of injection moulded on a flat basis, so that makes me think I'm not too happy with just putting them on like this, but we'll have a go. Certainly um, it's the way the maker recommends it, and you should always try that way first. So I'm just cutting these out. I mean, they're all identical, so you would need to change them up a bit. And these are just um, Zuron clippers um, for injection mould machine. They're sprue cutters, and I do find them incredibly useful. Okay, so they're the ones with the bases coloured. And then these ones, I'm going to snip the actual plants off. So they're just going to be snipped like this. So we've got the two piles. These are the ones that are individual, and these are the ones that are on the 
sprue base still, I just recommend. So I'm going to start off with those sprue base ones and my um, diorama here. This is the O-scale diorama, so all these are quite small. Put them down and put them in place near the edge of your... Now, because you've, um, you've got a variety, they're very flat, so you can't twist them around much, really. So you just have to sort of, they just, they spring back and I wouldn't want to bend them. So you just have to try and create something that is um, like the feeling of depth from having a massing of them rather than from having a lot of variety front and back. So I would say this is probably better on a diorama where you, or a layout, where you only see them from one angle. So you don't see them as much from the side on, but you can twist them around so you get a bit more variety of um, shape. Just normal white glue I'm gluing them on with. I'm not a, um, I'm not a fan of using loads of technical glues if white glue can do, but let's just see. So they're going down behind these ones. You can see they're beginning to mass. Okay, just gluing the last one on. Turn it around and try and drop it in the middle. There we go. So that's a mass of bulrushes. So the final thing you need to do with these bulrushes is hide those plastic bases. I just use tile grout. It's cheap, it's easy, and it comes in a variety of colors, including brown, which is a great soil color. I put it on with a teaspoon, then I use a brush to just work it in around the bases of the bulrushes. Once I've done that, I spray it with IPA and water. I use um, more or less neat IPA from an electrical supplier and then just dilute it with water to taste. And I spray it on and finally, even though it's ground and there's an element of cement, I drip on some diluted plain white glue and water. And once that's all dried, the base, that plastic base that held those bulrushes together will be hidden. So back to the small diorama that we have where we're doing we're going to put some water in later. So the bases of all these will be covered. It's easier to get better angles, but keeping them upright is very difficult. So about this point, normally, I get a bit fed up with the white glue, which is what I've been using, and I move to super glue and a kicker. So I've got a kicker. It's um, something that sets super glue straight away. Not very much left in there, but it doesn't need a lot. There we go. And um, some super glue and uh, put it in one of my amazing McDonald's cups. So what you need is um, just a, a little blob at the bottom of super glue. It doesn't take much. And I do like Deluxe Materials super glue, so I always use theirs. This is their thick gel one. And then all you do is you dip your super glue and you have your kicker ready to go and you can plant it and you just literally zap it with your kicker and it's upright straight away. You need to make sure you build up the angles on these otherwise you'll end up with a very straight looking set. And they don't all have to be totally um, vertical but the bulrushes normally would be. It's a good idea to check your bulrushes are upright when you're doing this. 
Now, I do prefer of the two. I think this gets you a better technique, but you do have to do each one individually, and that takes a lot more time. And it is, in many of these things, just a bit of a time game. So there we go. We've got a set of, um, I think, better looking bulrushes than the other ones, which are very straight. But we'll see what they're like when they're finished. So here's the final diorama. And this is when we put the bulrushes on and we, we put them at different angles. And I think it has come out a little bit more realistic looking than the other diorama. But, you know, it takes all sorts of weeds and it's much quicker to do them when they're attached to a base. On my second diorama, you can see that the reeds are a lot more regimented, and certainly from above, they are in very straight lines. From a distance, it won't be a problem, but if you've got a up close and personal scene, you may prefer to plant them one by one. In this week's adventure of the mini Cathays, are they safe yet? Did they survive the deadly encounter with the bulrush last week? Tune in and find out. Ooh, now I escaped last week. I did get away from that deadly bulrush. And this week, well, a little bit more plastic. Don't think that didn't do very much. You can't even park and look through them or you kick them. Oh, it hurt. Yeah, but don't worry, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, they all came to help, obviously. They just stand there and laugh. I didn't know it wasn't attacking me, it's only paper cut laser mini thingy. It looked really scary. But anyway, this week I saw a make these and they are very solid. And I know they're not going to move and attack me. So I'm fine, thank you. Yep, yeah, fine. Honest, I'm fine. Yes, I know I'm fine. Thank you for all the cards and well wishing and the emails and the, the various things because I know people were really worried about me. But no, I just literally, I tripped over the ball rush really, that was all. Embarrassing route to have done it on YouTube where hundreds of people may notice, but uh, thankfully she hasn't got so many thousands of subscribers, so that's okay. Whew. Anyway, I'm fine. See you next week. Listen to her. Kathy's illusional, or is there really something out there to get them? Tune in next week to find out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, subscribe to me on YouTube or on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling. <laughs>